action. Okay, I'm going to do some ramp test, so I can see the proper way to do a ramp test, and then I'm going to do a roll-on test using the ramp test data. So I'm going to come up here, go in, I've already entered this vehicle in the database, or have it entered, so I'm going to find it. There it is, 2019 Ford Mustang. I'm going to set up a ramp test. Get a ramp. We do 15 miles per hour per second. And I'm going to do a four second hold on start, which is four seconds. It's advantageous to lower this number as much as possible, but it takes some practice. I'm going to start off at four seconds, and then I'm going to do the next run at one second. And I'm going to show you the difference. Basically what four seconds means is it's going to try to hold when I press go, whatever speed that is, and hold it there for four seconds. Top dynos depict this if the if the hold on is a long time. Watch the effect, and you see this initial spike holding, and it's always there. Watch what happens when I change that time, the whole time to one second. And again, I need to have the throttle almost almost to the floor after one second. All right, so I put in one second. isn't there. It's less dramatic, okay? So, however, for tuning, a lot of people like to do the roll-on test because it gets a lot of variables out. So how do you select the parameters for a roll-on test? Well, the quick thing to do is change this graph to primary PAU command, command, like that, and I'll select that graph to none. I'll change this to time, and I really only want to know basically after four seconds on the second run, okay? The second the second run, I only had a one second hold on, so it was correct. But the first run, I had a four second hold on start, so you get that deviation. Let's go over to speed. So I see, let's quickly, I'm gonna go over right here. I'm gonna go speed, I'm gonna go time. So I remember, I only wanna do it after, say, six seconds from the second, on, from the first run on. So that speed, I'm gonna go over here, view, cursor. It was around 58 miles per hour. So it starts at 50 miles per hour, 55 we'll say. So I'm gonna go back down to here, primary PAU. And we'll do this with speed. So I wanna look at the parameters now at 55 miles per hour. So here we have 55, and I have this piece of paper here, I'm writing it down. So at 55 miles per hour, it had about 63% low, all right? The car went up to around, we'll say, oh, 100 miles per hour, all right? At 100 miles per hour, you know, it went to 60% load as well, all right? But the important thing to do, if you look at this curve, so it went from 65% roughly to 60. When I set up my roll-on test, I'm going to go ahead and make these numbers a little less. I'm going to go ahead and drop that 63% down to around 50, or 53, that 60% down to 50. And in the middle, you can see it's a little higher, right? 
And we started at 55 miles per hour, we went to 60. We're gonna round that off to 50. Then the next step, we're gonna go, say, 70 and then 90. So at 70 miles per hour, we were at 70% minus 10 is 60. At 90 miles per hour, we were at around 65% minus 10 is 55. So these are the parameters I'm gonna enter into my roll-on test. 50, 60, 55, and 50. So my next test, I'm gonna set up a roll-on. And for a hub dyno, this is very important. It, it helps the differential. Always keep a base load of either 10 or 5%. That's what the street looks like there. All right, I'm gonna leave it at 10. So I'm gonna select a roll-on. So we're gonna go roll-on now. Roll-on. And I'm gonna select these parameters. And I want the screen to look just like this. So I started at 50 miles per hour. I'm gonna do 50. And the next one is 70. Next one is 90. Final one's 100. All right, so now I don't wanna use the predefined. I wanna enter these. So I wanna put in 50. I wanna put 60. And I wanna put 55. And the last one, 50. And just out of curiosity, you'll notice that curve kind of looks like a torque curve. It looked parabolic. That's what it, you should be expecting. If it was a turbo car, a supercharged, you might keep these higher up in the end. But I'm selecting that based on my information from the ramp test. So I'm going to go do a roll-on. It's now a roll-on test. I don't need this hold-on start anymore, but I could leave it in there one second if I wanted to. I'm getting rid of it. All right? So when I'm about 55 miles per hour, I'm going to hit go on the handheld. All right? And we'll see what happens. is a lot smoother. It doesn't have that bump at the first. If I compare it with the ramp test, it's just a cleaner graph. It helps tuners. The horsepower is a little different, 416 to 395. And that's only because when you have different types of tests, the power will be different. If I did roll on, again, another roll on, just like what I did, it will be again around 416. Okay, that concludes how to set up a roll on test from ramp test data and for tuners in general using a roll-on test. Thank you.